Hey everybody, uh, this is Nate. I'm the engineer behind the Thermovape, and uh, we had some questions online that made me think it would be a good time to put together an instructional video to show you how to how to tear down and correctly reassemble the Thermovape. So here we have a black Thermovape. Um, what I'm going to do is take it apart and put it back together, and so uh, so we cover all of the important steps and notes uh, on how to put it together correctly so that it functions correctly. All right, so black thermal vape. Drip tip pops out. Uh, I'll just put it back in because there's no secrets behind it. Um, the top cap threads off. Uh, it is an electroless nickel plated uh, aluminum threaded top cap that is then pressed in um, to a Delrin top cap with the grippy a uh, little star tip to help people um, put a torque on it to unscrew it. So that's that. Um, then the middle section uh, comes apart. The middle section consists of many parts. Um, what uh, I guess what you need to know is that this is the heart of the, de of the device. Uh, this is where the circuit is completed and broken. Uh, this is where the thermal core threads in and this is where the middle Delrin sleeve presses on. So that's subassembly uh, number two. And here we have the main body, battery sleeve, batteries, and the lower Delrin sleeve. Um, as you know, the batteries hide in there. Um, and then the battery sleeve uh, just slides in and out. So that's that. And here we have the main body with the lower Delrin sleeve. So this is your first subassembly level. Um, you can see it's pretty simple. Uh, comes apart uh, without the use of tools, and uh, you know, there's, there's nothing really to it. So let's go one step further. Um, the Delrin sleeves uh, press on to the uh, main body and the thermo interface parts. Um, this is a light press fit. Uh, I designed it such that it could be removed uh, and reinstalled by hand. So what I do, and you know everybody's different, um, what works for me may not work for somebody else, but my preferred method is to put my thumb on the base and grip the Delrin sleeve and just push it out. So that just comes apart like that. Um, so there we have our Delrin sleeve and our main body. So there's those parts. Um, So here we have the, what I call the heart of the device. Uh, this is where all the action is. Um, this contains the only dynamic part and um, consists of many parts. Uh, uh, let's take it apart. So here, just as before, what I do is I press with my thumb and slide the middle Delrin sleeve off. Um, then we're left with uh, the switch, the thermo core interface part, and the thermo core itself. Um, as you guys have seen in our instructional video, uh, the thermal core just unthreads. Simple right hand threads. Um, and that is the thermal core. Um, there it is. Cute little guy. And the only other part that is removable is the switch. You can just pull on the post. The switch comes out. And there's actually an O ring in here. And you fish it out with a pin. I call it the switch o-ring. And then there we have the thermal core interface piece. Uh, this actually consists of two aluminum pieces, but they are bonded together and uh, not to be removed. Uh, and there's no reason to take them apart anyway. So there's our, uh, what I would call our most broken down state. Um, we have our lower Delrin sleeve, our middle Delrin sleeve, our Delrin sleeve uh, cap assembly, uh, Delrin mouthpiece, the main body, the thermal core, our batteries, the switch, the switch o-ring, the uh, thermal core interface piece, and the battery sleeve. So that's, that's pretty much as far as anybody will ever take it apart without tools and as far as anyone needs to take it apart. So that is that. So let's put it back together. Um, going back the way we came, um, back with the 
thermo core interface piece. The thing to remember here with the switch O-ring is that it goes in and needs to be pushed all the way against the counter bore. So in, in this, in this uh, lower end of the thermal core interface piece, you'll notice there's a counter bore. There's a shoulder on the inside and then there's a through hole below that. Um, it's just real important that you get that, that O-ring all the way down against the base of that counter bore. The reason for this is that O-ring ultimately dictates or determines the final position, the linear position of the switch. Uh, in other words, this shoulder rests against the O-ring, which, which rests against the counter bore. So to put the switch in, it's real simple. You just push it in, make sure it's all the way in. If you hear that click and it returns, your switch is functional. Um, if you're thinking the switch might uh, not be functional, take it apart, make sure it's pressed all the way in, make sure it clicks and the spring returns it, um, then you know it's working correctly. So that's the switch. From here we can thread the interface in, or I'm sorry, the uh, thermal core into the uh, thermal core interface piece. Uh, this is a fine right hand uh, thread. And you'll notice that the, the flange here will interface first. That's, that's uh, basically acting as an alignment tool. And your threads can then be engaged right hand threaded, screw it in, um, screw it in until it won't screw in any further. You don't need to, to screw it tight, just to its final position, to its all the way uh, threaded in position. Um, one thing to note, if you're here and you think you have threaded it all the way in and you are looking at this flange and you can see a, a black line here or any part of the o-ring, then that means that you have not threaded the thermal core in far enough. So just make sure it's threaded all the way in. But won't go in any further. Notice I'm not really, you know, using a lot of force. I'm just threading it in, and there you have it. That is the assembly of the heart of the device. Um, from here, we can put our um, middle Delrin sleeve onto our, uh, I guess, middle subassembly. We'll call it. One thing to note is that the middle Delrin sleeve is not symmetric. Um, you'll notice these grooves are not symmetric. There are different counter bores on each end, and this groove has holes in the base of the groove. Um, they're all the way around the device. Um, so when you're assembling this, the whole end, this end, faces the thermal core. Notice there's holes in the interface piece. These will be underneath the holes in the middle Delrin sleeve. Clocking is not important, it's just important that you orient them this direction. So with that, I just push the sleeve on. From here, don't push it all the way on, just push it around 3 eighths of an inch on um, until it gets to about to that shoulder. You'll, uh, you'll know why later in the video. So that's our assembly stage for the middle piece. Um, then we can go on to the main body and the lower Delrin um, lower Delrin sleeve. So another thing to note here is that um, these are not symmetric. So there's a bottom, a, there's a bottom, there's a top. Um, this has a bottom and a top and the way to know the difference is that this groove here on our lower Delrin sleeve it's on the bottom. In other words, it goes towards the bottom of the uh, main body. Um, so knowing that you're orient orienting them correctly, um, you would line up, in other words, clock your cutout so they are you know, facing the same direction and just slide that on. Um, at around three quarters to you know, 80 percent of the way slid on, um, you'll notice it starts to get harder to rotate. Um, that's, that's because the farther you press on the Delrin sleeve onto the main body, um, the more of the uh, force fit uh, you will be engaging and the stiffer, or, i.e., or, or harder it will be to rotate them relative to each other. So what you want to do here, make sure is that your, you know, your cutouts are, are aligned. Um, this can be done by hand here. Um, you just want to set that and stay conscious of the fact that they are aligned and need to stay aligned uh, before you press it further. So knowing that, moving on, we would provide just, just a clamping force. We don't want to torque it on. We don't want to twist it on. 
we just want to push it on further, you know, with a straight linear force. And I push it on for this step up until it's flush with the bottom. Okay, so that's 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 getting the lower delrin sleeve onto the main body. That's the first step of it. Align your cutouts, push it straight on, don't torque it on, just a straight linear force. From here. Uh, we can put our battery sleeve in. We can put our batteries in. Um, another note that I don't know, uh, I'm not certain uh, was made, is that the batteries can be uh, positive down or positive up. All that matters is that they are, uh, you know, both facing the same direction. So I'll put them positive down just for kicks, and then we're ready to go to the next step. So, the next step requires an awareness of the position of all the delrin sleeves. Um, the cap that threads on first will determine the position of the middle delrin sleeve, which then in turn determines the position of the lower delrin sleeve. So knowing that, it's a, it's a one, two, three positioning uh, sequence. So the beginning of that sequence would consist of threading the cap on, Note that there's a gap here. Uh, if you remember, I intentionally left that gap by saying we pushed the, low, the middle delrin sleeve only on about three eighths of an inch. That's because with the cap threaded on, we now know the final position of the middle delrin sleeve, and we achieve that just by pushing it all the way up until the gap is closed. Clocking here doesn't matter; it's irrelevant. The counterbore and the delrin sleeve will provide a radial gap such that air can come in the holes and find their way into the next holes, um, irrelevant of, of the clocking position. So now we've got the upper part together. We can thread on the main body. Okay, and once again we have the gap that we intentionally left because we only pushed it flush with the bottom. And just as before, when we push the lower delrin sleeve onto the main body, uh, staying conscious of the cutouts being aligned, we need to be conscious of that again. And I don't want to torque this on as I push, push the lower delrin sleeve up and close this gap. I want to provide a straight force. So I just do that just by pushing straight on. And now you'll notice that the cutouts are aligned. Uh, that's, that's pretty much all there is to it with that. Uh, last, we have the mouthpiece. Um, a little twist there. I, I intentionally um, designed that to be a tight fit because I hate it when mouthpieces fall out of things. And uh, there you have it. That is a disassembled and reassembled uh, thermal vape. And let's just make sure it works. So remember, we're checking. We're we're making sure that none of the O-ring is showing on the flange at the base of the thermal core. I don't see any O-ring. That means it's threaded in all the way. And we hold it on, and you can see that uh, the circuit is complete, and we have an active thermal core. So that's it, folks. I hope that helps. Um, that is the thermal vape. I'm very proud of it. It's been a lot of fun to uh, design this and push it through production. And uh, stay tuned, because I have some more devices coming out that I'm pretty confident you guys are going to enjoy. All right. Cheers.